Hello, welcome to yet another Regular Expressions video. And in this Regular Expressions video, whew, I think this might be, well, I probably will never ever stop making Regular Expressions videos, but at least for this sequence that I'm making right now today, who knows when you're watching this in the future, this is the last one. <laughs> okay, so with this video, uh, what I wanna focus on is the replace function. So uh, in the previous video, I looked at the split function. Split function is a function that you call on a string, you give it a regular expression, and the regular expression is a way to match a delimiter which indicates where you should split that text up into an array of chunks, tokens, so to speak. Now I want to look at the replace function, which is a function that you also call on a string with a regular expression, but wherever that regular expression matches, you give it something else to replace it with, right? Just like find and replace in any text editor. But because it's regular expressions, because it's code, there are all sorts of powerful things that you can do that you couldn't just as easily do with your standard computer find replace. So, um, you know, what you might do with this is um, come up with some sort of like translator web application. So, you know, the, you can find, you know, websites that take your text and translate it into pirate speak, for example. So if you're looking for an exercise or something to try to do, write a web page like this where you enter in some text, you hit submit, you do some kind of crazy replacing magic, and you get a new text, whether it's translating into some other funny way of speaking or um, that sort of thing. So I'll, I'll encourage you to come up with some creative ideas from what I show you here. So let's first just look at the basics of replace. So I'm going to um, make a string that uh, um, just says uh, equals um, unicorns and rainbows. Okay, so that's a string. And now what I want to say is s dot replace. And uh, here's a regular expression, unicorns. And I want you to replace that with cupcakes. So sorry that this is kind of like breaking into a line weirdly. So you can see replace any time you match unicorns and replace it with cupcakes. If I do this, and now we've replaced it, we have cupcakes and rainbows. Very, very simple idea. Now, let's just look at something. Look at the original string. The original string is still unicorn and rainbows. So one thing that's really important about this is you're not modifying the actual string. If you want to modify the actual string in your code, you're going to need to say s equals the result of itself replacing unicorns with cupcakes. <laughs> is this really me replacing unicorns with cupcakes? I think it is. OK. Uh, OK, so you can see now the value of s is cupcakes and rainbows. OK, um, this definitely needs some sort of background music, but whatever. OK, so this is how replace works. Now, obviously, it's more powerful than this because I haven't really done much in the regular expression other than simply, um, uh, um, simply um, re replace a literal word with another literal word. So let's do this a little bit differently and say something like, um, by the way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, wait, 8. So unicorns is 7. OK, so let's, 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 uh, let's, uh, let's say uh, S is unicorns and rainbows and uh, cupcakes. And what I want to do, and I'm going to clear this out, is I want to say uh, S s dot replace and what I want to do is replace any sequence of word characters that is between six and eight characters with um, rainbows, unicorns, cupcakes, what else is there? Is there anything <laughs> in this world? <laughs> um, let's just make them all, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm waiting for the chat to like catch up with me and give me a suggestion, but the chat is 15 seconds behind. So you, the poor person in the future watching this video with no live chat, yes, kittens, thank you very much. Uh, kittens, uh, I need to replace it with kittens. So, and I forgot my slash here. Um, so I'm gonna run this. It was worth waiting for the kittens, right? So if we run this, uh, syntax error. What did I, what's, what's wrong with this? Missing parentheses. Oh, I forgot the parentheses here. Sorry. Uh, that's a curly bracket. <laughs> Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. So wait, what's the original? Uh, ah, and guess what? OK, fascinating, fascinating thing that happened. I believe that rainbows, which has eight characters, and cupcakes, which has eight characters, should also be there. Like kittens, no, sorry. 
Unicorns has one, two, three, four. Oh, they all have eight characters. They all have eight characters. So let's do this again. Replace any eight character word with kittens. But still, it only replaced the first one. Why? Because I forgot about the global flag. So the global flag is very important. The replace function is only going to replace the first instance of something it matches without the global flag. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. Kittens, kittens and kittens and kittens. I'm really losing my mind. Someone please make a song out of that. <laughs> OK. Um, now, OK, so uh, that's what replace does. That's the basics of replace. Now, let me show you that you can also use capturing groups. I'm going to get a lot of thumbs down on this video, I can tell already. Uh, you know, some people will like it, but a lot of people won't. Internet doesn't, you know. Okay, um, so you can also use capturing groups. So let's just say that what I want to do is anytime I see a, a vowel, anytime I capture a vowel, I want to double the vowel. So um, I'm going to clear this, and I'm going to do uh, S. So that's the string, right? So what I want to say is replace what? I want to match A, E, I, O, U, right? I want to match any A, E, I, O, U. And I want to replace it with what? Well, what did I match? So what if I put the parentheses around the whole thing? So I'm not doing anything too sophisticated where I'm you know, capturing subgroups, but of course I could do that. You could do that phone number that I showed you with capturing groups in a previous video. But let's just say I want to capture the vowel. And I want to replace it with what? What I captured, followed by what I captured. So this, uh, I could probably think of a more clever example, but you get the idea. So here I am taking, uh, replacing anything I capture with itself. Uh, whoops. Ah, whoops, of course. I'm sorry. This always needs to be in a string. So even though what's a little tricky about this is this is a regular expression, so forward slash, forward slash. This is a string, so it's in quotes. But JavaScript is going to figure out that this is the secret code for the back reference, even within the string itself, I think. Unit, ah, but look at that. It only did the first one. Why? Because I forgot the global flag yet again. Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. There we go, see? So you can use back reference. Um, you know, maybe look at the sort of double words thing or double words or you know, what, how might you, uh, you come up with some other clever way that you could um, certainly do. Um, oh, and, oh, sometimes why, yes. I forgot about the sometimes why, okay. So um, anyway, so, so that's something you can do with back references. Okay, now, here's the thing. I'm really getting to something. I need my drum roll sound effect that I don't have. Someday I'll have a drum roll sound effect. This is the real magic of using regular expressions in JavaScript, is what I've shown you is regular expression and the string that you intend to substitute. But what happens if you pass a function into there? This is incredibly powerful and somewhat unique to JavaScript, that you can actually have a callback function. So let's see how this works. Um, so I'm going to do this in the code because I don't, can't think of <laughs> another way to easily demonstrate this using the console. So let's look at this. Okay. So I'm going to go to the code for a second, and I'm going to write a regular expression. I want to match any, um, I'm going to match a word boundary followed by, uh, word boundary followed by, some amount of uh, word characters, one or more, followed by word boundary, OK? So that's my regular expression. Then what I want to say, and I'm going to give myself some line breaks here to raise this up. Now, what I want to say is var, <laughs> OK, uh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Uh, no, no, s dot replace with that regular expression, and I'm just going to say something like replacer. Now, I can write an anonymous function right into there. I can write an anonymous function right into there. But just to make things a little bit easier to follow, I'm going to write a separate function down here, replacer. And I'm going to give it an argument, match. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say console.log match. And <laughs> auto format gave, got, got rid of all my line breaks. It's going to do this again as soon as I hit Command S. That's very annoying to me. 
I'm going to put something down here. There, thank you. OK, so what's going on here? The replace function is going to execute a callback for every single time you, um, and I want to say the, uh, I'm going to say var new string, and I also want to say console.log new string, and I'm going to say create p new string. Ah, uh, camera. Come back to me, camera. OK, so I want to just sort of look at what's happening on the inside here. So let me just run this, hit refresh. I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'm going to hit submit, and then look. So first of all, it, got, it matched A, and then it said undefined rainbow. So that's a little bit crazy. Huh? What's going on? Well, first of all, what did it do? First thing is it executes replacer for every single match of this regular expression. But notice the regular expression does not have does not have the global flag. So it console logged the match, which is the first thing it found, A, and then it replaced it with what? It didn't replace it with anything. It will replace it in the string with whatever you return. Uh, blueberry. So now let me run this again. It replaced A with blueberry. Now let me do something. Let me give this the global flag. Blueberry, 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 right? What it's doing is it's saying for every match of that regular expression, return blueberry, meaning replace it with this. But do you realize what's now possible? This function has two lines of code. I'm console logging the match, and I'm returning blueberry. But now you have the entire known power of the programming universe to put in here. So any logic you could possibly imagine you could put in here. So for example, uh, this is not going to be that interesting, but I could say if match dot length equal, uh, equals four, uh, return match dot two uppercase. Otherwise, just return match. What is this going to do? This is saying if the thing you matched has four characters, return an uppercase version of it. Otherwise, return it as it is. Let's look at this now. So you can see all the four letter words are now made all uppercase. This is not that of innovative of an example, but imagine what I could do. I could make an API query here. I could check today's weather here. I could do anything every time this regular expression matches. So I can't emphasize here enough how much is possible within here. And I wish I could make this video hours long and just kind of go through all sorts of crazy ideas. But I'm leaving it to you, the viewer, to try to come up with your crazy ideas right here. So let's, though, let's look at a little bit more. I'm trying to think of how I can make this a little bit more interesting. Let's go back to the phone numbers for a second, <laughs> OK? Uh, so I'm going to put some, some numbers in here, 999-1234 and 111-8765 uh, you know, and 8675309. Uh, OK, so I put, in a, uh, put a dot in there. So I, I'll just keep the dash in there. So I just want to look at what happens with capturing groups. Because this is even more sort of crazy what you can do. So now, if I go back to my code and I change my regular expression to match the phone numbers. So I'm going to say, uh, I've done this so many times now, I want three digits followed by a dash, followed by uh, four digits. And I just want to, um, I'm going to log that match. I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to just say return match so that the replacer is doing nothing. So I just want to make sure that this regular expression is working. And I'm going to run this, hit submit, and you can see, and I don't, I don't want to uh, log this in the console. I just want to see the matches. You can see, there we go. So I'm matching those phone numbers in the text. Now, what happens when you add a capturing group? And this really will unlock you know, so much more. I said the you know, entire power of the known universe is right here. Watch, watch this. So, um, so first of all, let me make a capturing group. I'm going to put a capturing group around here. I'm, making one. I'm going to put a capturing group around that first group. And now I'm going to run this again. Hmm. Nothing different happened. Why? How do I get access to that group? Well, let's look at this function. 
Notice how this function has an argument. This callback replacer function has an argument it gets. The first argument is match. Group 0, the full match. The full match is always group 0. Guess what the second argument is? Group 1. Guess what the third argument is? Group 2. Now, there is no group 2, but I can just list them there because maybe I, you know, maybe I want a group 2. I'll have a group 2 right here. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to say console.log match, console.log group 1, console.log group 2. Let me run this again. Hit submit. And you can see, look at that. I now am able to have the callback separate out the different groups. If my brain worked any better, I would have all sorts of creative ideas. What I would love for you to do, did I say this already? Tell me your creative ideas of what kind of crazy replacer stuff you could do with this, and I'll come back and do some coding challenges with some of those ideas or share them with me. And I'll, um, but, but this is really unlocking a lot of possibilities for all sorts of strange text replacement algorithms that you can use. Um, the last thing I just want to mention, though, is that instead of actually having to have these arguments listed as separate variables, you can also use a secret or variable in JavaScript, it's not so secret, called the arguments array. The arguments array exists for any function that just stores all of the arguments passed into the function, the, the, the values of the parameters, as in an array. And I have a separate video which actually covers this, which you can look at. But I just want to show you what that looks like here. And so you can see here, um, and by the way, look at this. If you look at that, there's actually more stuff that we didn't even realize. There's the full match, group 0, group 1, 15, I think, is the, the length of the string. I guess that's just the length of the original string. No. What is that? Somebody tell me. Um, and then the full string is there, in case you needed that as reference as the fourth argument. What is the 15? I'm trying to remember what the 15 is. Somebody in the chat, tell me. Of the chat is 15 seconds behind me. So I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to get so many YouTube comments of telling me what it is because I can't remember. Um, but uh, you can see that there's meta. It's the length of all the groups together. OK, position and string. Someone says position and string. Someone says length of all the groups together. I, I, I have a feeling that, um, that it probably is a uh, Let's just quickly test out this idea. Let's add those groups all together. 15, yeah. So 15 seems to be the length of all the groups added together. I don't know what that's useful for exactly, but um, seems to be useful for something. OK, so um, this is the basic gist of it. Um, um, uh, there's so much that you could do with replacing text. Um, think about types of different sort of interesting creative possibilities of how you might do text mashups, text translations, uh, API queries, mixing up text, reversing order, swapping things out. Um, but, um, and so I encourage you to play around with this replace idea, play around with the groups, and let me know if you have some creative ideas or some things that you make with it, and um, I'd love to hear about it. And I'm going to do a coding challenge where I use some of this just to show you how to sort of interact with words on an uh, individual basis. Okay? Um, I'll see you in the next coding challenge video.